Hey, how's it going? Welcome to the Pack a Day Podcast. I'm Andy Herman. You probably know that, but thank you so much for joining me anyway. You can follow me on Twitter at Andy Herman NFL. Really appreciate you guys. Uh, It's been really fun doing this now for over 400 episodes. Enough of that crap, though. Let's get into today's show. Uh, I want to go over, obviously, my defensive grades for the week, which I'll get to in just a moment. Want to start with Whitney Merciless. Before I get there, I know some of you have been asking about Ben Fennel. Uh, Ben's just been super busy. He took on a new job this year working with CBS. He's actually on Charles Davis's CBS uh, crew when they announced the game. So uh, he's obviously been traveling, doing a variety of different things. So I uh, haven't been able to uh, catch up with Ben quite as often as I would have hoped, but uh, looking at some other potential options, and I'm sure we'll have Ben on uh, again, hopefully sometime in the future. Uh, but as of right now, uh, you're stuck with just me. So sorry for that. But again, hopefully Hopefully at some point we'll be able to get Ben on in the future. Let's jump into Whitney Merciless though, because this is obviously a signing that's now official. Green Bay picked up Merciless, gave him number 50. Sorry, Tipa Naliai, uh, your career is now officially off the rails because if you're an edge rusher and you're wearing number 40, it's just not, I'm sorry, it's not going to end well. Uh, I'm obviously being facetious. We'll see what happens with Tipa. But the more important storyline here is, of course, Whitney Merciless should look good in that Green Bay number 50. I am like unrealistically optimistic about this move. And I should preface that by saying, I don't think Whitney Merciless is going to come in and you're just going to be like, holy cow, they just found like a Julius Peppers or something. Like, I don't think that's going to be the case. However, I do think that Whitney Merciless has a little bit left in the tank. I think he's a average to slightly above average edge rusher. If you can get him 20 to 30 snaps per game, I think he has something to give you on pass downs. And I think most importantly, I do believe he is a firm upgrade over Jonathan Garvin and Ladarius Hamilton. And in an ideal world, in a ideal, ideal, ideal world, you would love to have Zadarius Smith and Preston Smith and Rashawn Gary. And now Merciless can maybe play 15 dedicated pass rush snaps a game and just come in and do his thing. I think they're going to need him a bit more than that. But I like the potential of a Gary, Preston, Merciless, and uh, Jonathan Garvin group for the time being. And I know that isn't ideal because it knows Adarius Smith, but I think they can win with that four on the edge and provide a little bit something different. And what I would really like to see, and, and what's been happening at times, is you will see from time to time where the rotations are such where you'll end up with front fours where it's Garvin and Ladarius Hamilton at edge. And then it's like Lowry and Lancaster inside. And then all of a sudden they drop back to pass and it's like, oh, like you're not going to get to the quarterback, right? So this gives you another guy that has some juice who can get to the quarterback who's played in this league for a long time. And as I mentioned yesterday, do not undercut the fact that this is a player who has been with a floundering franchise over the specifically the last couple seasons. They've gone through different coaches, the Deshaun Watson issue. They, you know, move on from JJ Watt. They trade away DeAndre Hopkins. Like this is a team that was in the NFC or AFC championship game against, uh, or at least I don't know if it was a championship or divisional round. It was the divisional round, I believe, but against the Chiefs. Um, and they had that big lead. And then of course the Chiefs come back and then everything has basically been a complete and utter failure for the Texans since then. I was looking at their roster, like there, there's not even like valuable trade chips on this roster right now for his, it is, it is an abysmal, abysmal roster and going from that. And I, I mentioned this with Peter yesterday. I can't explain to you how freed Randall Cobb looked at that first day at practice. He looked like he was in prison for the last two years and he just got a new lease on life and was so excited to be outside playing football I can't even explain it to you. He was overjoyed, overzealous. He was just a, he was like a free man. He was so happy. He was so happy. Whitney Merciless has been a Texan for basically a decade, a decade with the same team, variety of coaching staffs, variety of whatever. But I'm sure at this point in his career, the last thing he wants in year nine, 10, whatever it is to be on this team that's floundering and basically tanking and needs a you know top pick overall next year and those sort of things. That is the worst place to be for a veteran right now. 
it's just it's you're basically you know like punching a time card at that point right because the, the team probably doesn't have a ton of interest in you they want to develop their younger guys they don't want to win anyway so if you get a sack or two it's not even helping them because they probably would rather lose like it's just a bad situation to be in and that, that we know the state of that franchise right now go from that to the green bay packers at five and one as mostly stable of a franchise as you can usually get. I know there's a couple clouds over the franchise that still need to be kind of figured out, but for the most part, a stable franchise. And to be fair, Whitney Merciless has zero care as to what happens to this Packers team in 2022, unless, you know, I I should say later in 22, hopefully early 2022, January and February specifically, uh, he very much cares what this Packer team is doing. But next season, he doesn't care. The the odds that he's back in Green Bay are slim to none. He knows that this is a one-year, you know, rental situation. He knows that the Packers are in an all-in situation. And I guarantee you, he's chomping at the bit to be a part of that. I guarantee you that he's going to have more juice in Green Bay than he had in Houston. I guarantee you those first snaps are going to feel like he's a new man because I literally saw it in practice with Randall Cobb and we've seen some of that come to fruition with Cobb as well. Now, again, I need to temper expectations a bit. I I don't think he's going to come in and just be this world beater. There are going to be some things that he just doesn't do as well. We've all seen on Twitter, I'm sure whatever social media you're on, his his pass rush productivity is basically like bottoming out and those sort of things. He's not the player he once was. He's not going to be this consistent game changer, but he can still be a good player. And again, he's better than the number three or number four that are currently on the roster. And maybe most importantly here, is it's just good business to get more depth at a position that right now is dangerously thin. If Preston's not able to go this week, you've got Gary and Garvin starting with Ladarius Hamilton and Tipa Nalii as your two players off the bench. Like that's not good enough at edge. It's just not good enough. And I like Garvin. I, I, Ladarius Hamilton's actually put a couple nice plays on tape here and there. Tipa has some, you know, some pass rush ability, but that's just not good enough at edge rusher in the NFL. Adding a player like Whitney Merciless and, you know, just the the veteran mind and the awareness and how to get past, like, there's going to be times where he's matched up against a, a younger, inexperienced offensive tackle, and he's going to be able to win that just based on pure experience. So again, temper expectations a bit, but I really like this signing for Green Bay. And it's another one of those very low risk potential. I don't think it's a very high reward, but there's good reward to be had there for a signing like this. I think he can impact this team this year. I think that I don't think it's out of the question that he could see some snaps this week. And again, overall, I love the depth and I love the signing and I love Brian Gutekunst going after a player like that at a position of need at this point in the season. It's one thing to say that roster building is a 365 day a year process. It's another to live it and breathe it and do it. Brian Gutekunst is living it, breathing it, doing it. We've seen it, you know, we'll see by the end of the year how this, you know, trio of Razul Douglas and Jalen Smith and Whitney Merciless end up working out for Green Bay. And who knows if all of them even make it through the season. They could add maybe one or two more guys like that. We'll see. But I love what he's doing. I'm excited to see where it heads. And I think you're starting to see some experienced and you know, invested voices being added to the defense. And I thought last week, you know, Razul Douglas, he played intense football. We know that Jalen Smith, his play was shaky this past week as I sort of expected, but you know he's going to bring energy and you know he's going to bring leadership. You know he's going to play with passion and fire. I think you're going to see the same thing for Merciless. And again, we saw that same thing from Douglas. These are good additions to a locker room. These are good additions to a defense. These players are going to help the Packers in some capacity this season and sooner potentially rather than later. Let's jump into grades really quick. Top three grades this week on defense. Two of them are not going to surprise you. One of them might. Kenny Clark was number one. I don't think there's any surprise there. Chandon Sullivan was number two, maybe a slight surprise. Rashawn Gary was number three. I'm actually starting in reverse order here. I love this tape from Rashawn Gary this week. And there was so much converting speed to power, bull rushes, getting under offensive tackles, pads, driving them back into Justin Fields. This, this was one of my favorite games from Gary. I know he didn't, you know, you know, completely, you know, stack up the box score and, and things like that, but 
I, he was active all game long. You are starting to see him become a, a pest and a menace, I think is the best way to put it. It, it, it. Maybe not a game changer yet. Maybe not a, you know, quote unquote playmaker. He is a pest and somebody that you have to be aware of and is just a constant annoyance because he's buzzing around and starting to push players back into the pocket, setting a good edge. And he's just a player as a, as an offensive tackle, as an offensive coordinator, as a quarterback, you just start to get annoyed by after time. And that's a good thing if you're a Packer fan, right? So uh, I think there were times where you know, maybe early in his career, maybe you were annoyed because you wanted to see a bit more production. I think now it's the other way around. I think other fans and other teams are annoyed of Rashawn Gary because he's starting to make that impact. I really, really like this game from Rashawn. Chandon Sullivan, this was so great to see because listen, two years ago, I was so intrigued by Chandon and he played really good football. It was in uh, a smaller sample size. I want to say like four to 600 snaps, somewhere in there, maybe maybe even a little bit less than that. And But it, when he played, he played well. He, he was actually a little bit of a ball hawk. He, he consistently made plays on the ball. And that was coming after a training camp. And that was in 2019, where he had to do everything he could to make the team. He had an awesome training camp, awesome preseason, comes in, I think it was that Dallas game. And he basically picks off a pass in, in some of his first snaps. He was just a constant you know playmaker and baller and did everything he could to make that team Last year, I don't know if he just got comfortable, foot off the break, maybe it was an injury, who knows, but it was a lot more fluctuation. I thought he struggled real a lot to start the season, sort of tapered off and was pretty decent or to, to maybe even a, you know average, slightly above average in the middle of the season, and then really tapered off towards the end of the season again. This felt like a major season for Chan and Sullivan, mostly nondescript start to the year, but I thought this last game was really, really good. Played zone, played man, and I thought the big thing that stood out with Chandon is I thought he was much more anticipatory with the receivers' routes, expecting what was going to come. I don't know if he just did a ton of tape study. I don't know if he's been working with Jerry Gray, but I thought he covered great. I thought he understood route concepts. I thought he was on top of his game, and I really liked this game from Chandon. And then Kenny Clark, I don't need to go into detail here. You saw it. You saw the plays that he's making, but just know for every play that you're seeing that he's getting in the backfield, maybe making a sack or a big play, there are as many plays where he's just eating double teams, grinding out solid performances on plays that you may not notice it. He's doing everything. He's helping clog up running lanes. Again, I can't even... I can't even tell you how many times he's there clogging up running lanes. It is so impressive to watch. I'm I'm loving what Kenny's bringing to the table this year. You know, it's been noted that he's a little bit more of a a late season performer. Screw that. Not anymore. Like he's, he is on top of his game right now. And if he can continue this up and we'll see, he's playing a lot of snaps each week. I think they need to temper that down a little bit, but I've really liked what I've seen out of Kenny Clark so far this year. And, And once again, this week is my top rated defender. Hat tip to Dean Lowry and Henry Black, who also had really nice games and and graded well this week. As far as my bottom three, Isaac Yadam was my worst player this week in very limited snaps. I don't think that's going to surprise you. Once again, I think you saw the plays on tape. I think he got benched for a reason. So he was the lowest on on the list. Oren Burks and Jalen Smith were my two other ones. I thought the inside linebackers outside of Devondre Campbell were really poor this week. And I thought it's actually been maybe the surprise of this team up until this week had been the play of the inside linebackers. We know about Devondre Campbell, but I thought Chris Barnes and even Oren Burks had been solid up to this week. Ty Summers really struggled when he went in, but for the most part, I thought this linebacker group has been well above what I expected going into the season. And again, Devondre Campbell, a huge piece of that. This week, not so much. Campbell played well, not great, but he he definitely played solid football, made a couple really nice plays, a couple really, really nice plays, Uh, but overall solid football from Campbell. Barnes, Burks, Jalen Smith really struggle. And in fact, if you want to attribute Khalil Herbert's uh, twenty or uh, you know ninety-seven yards to something, I actually thought the defensive line performed pretty well. I think it was the linebackers getting themselves out of gaps, running out of plays, not holding up at the point of attack. I thought the linebackers were much more responsible for that running game this week than the defensive line was. That is going to do it for me today. Please make sure to subscribe if you have not already. I would insanely appreciate that. And it's a weekend, so it's a Friday. Uh, And yeah, we'll celebrate. And uh, I would really appreciate a subscription. But if not, appreciate you listening anyway. Give it a like, give it a comment. Uh, Enjoy your weekend. Enjoy your Friday. Hopefully we can cap it off uh, the weekend with a Packers victory on Sunday over Washington. But we'll be right back here tomorrow with an injury update and to start previewing that game. But until next time, and as always, Go Pack Go.